Hello everyone, this is the project done by group 1 in for the midterm exam in world literature. This is the story of Candid by Voltaire. The characters are Candid, who is the main character, Hyun Conde, Baron, Bangos, and James. In the country of Westphalia, there was a young man named Candid who lived in the castle of the most noble baron of Thunder Ten Trunk. The baron has two children. One was a young man, and the other was a beautiful woman named Cunegon whom Candid admired. Candid's mother was a baron's sister, therefore, they're all related to each other. Candid's mother refused to marry his father because of family background issues. Candid's beliefs were directly influenced by the castle oracle Pangloss, who was teaching metaphysical theologa cosmologology. Pangloss believed that everything happens with a cause, and everything was made ultimately for the best. One day, while Miss Kinnegan was taking a walk, she saw Pangloss through the bushes teaching her mother's maiden. She observed attentively and understood the teacher's reasoning about the cause and effects. Then she imagined that she might be a good reason for Candid and he for her. On her way back, she met Candid. They blushed and greeted each other in an awkward manner. The next day, after they had eaten their dinner, Kinnegan and Candid slipped behind the screen. She dropped her handkerchief. He picked it up and they innocently kissed each other. But the Baron saw them and without hesitation, kicked Candid out of the castle. Candid was driven out, penniless, heartbroken, and hungered wandered to the next town called Waldberg of Trachtigdorf, where two men found him hafted with hunger and fatigue. They gave him money and fed him. Candid accepted their generosity without knowing their real intentions. After that, the two men conscripted him to serve the Bulgarian army, where he suffered abuses and hardship as a part of joining the army. One morning, he decided to go for a walk. He was caught by four tall soldiers. He was brought to a dungeon while his neck and heels was bound. He was judged as a deserter and was given two choices for his sentence. One was to be shot on the head, and the other was to run before two lines of men who would strike him 36 times. At first, he chose neither of the two, but was not accepted. Thinking of leaving, he chose the latter one. Candid has gone through it twice, while he received 4,000 strikes from 2,000 men. Not wanting to suffer more pain, he begged to be shot through his head, but before the favor was granted, the Bulgarian king happened to pass by. Upon discovering that Candid was metaphysician and ignore, ignorant of the world, he pardoned him. Candid's wounds healed in time, exactly for him to serve in a war between Bulgars and Abaris. All throughout the battle, Candid desperately hided himself as soon as it's safe to come out. He deserted. He wandered through scenes of horrible carnage, including arms, legs, and brains. After seeing the horror of war, he decided to go somewhere else and to devote some time to think more about causes and effects. He wandered into a town and requested charity from a man. The man asked him to express his religious allegiance by saying, the Pope was an antichrist, but Candid was only able to respond with Bangalore's teachings about causes and effects. 
full of rage, the man's wife dumped a bucket of human waste on Candid's head. An Anabaptist named James saw the in- incident and offered help in the poor Candid and hired him as a worker in his business. Thus, Candid's faith in the world restored. The following day, as Candid was walking outside, he met a beggar and felt pity and afraid at the same time because of the beggar's appearance. But as time passed, he recognized that it was Pangloss. Candid brought Pangloss to the house of James. As Pangloss recovered some of his strengths, he told Candid that the Bulgarian army ravaged the baron's mansion, killed the entire family, raped, and killed Kun- Kunigon. Upon knowing this, Candid fainted but later concluded what happened as a cause and effect. Candid was so worried by his teacher's condition and told it to James. James was moved by Pangloss' story and decided to, decided to pay for him to be treated. After the medical treatment of Pangloss, James hired him as his bookkeeper. Two months later, James, Pangloss, and Candid traveled by ship to Lisbon for business. In the midst of a speech by Pangloss in the indispensable nature of his belief about the best of all possible worlds, the ship was caused by a terrible storm. The storm devastated the ship. James Staves saved a sailor from drowning, but in doing, he fell overboard. The ungrateful sailor didn't even do anything. Everyone who boarded the ship, drawn with the exemption of Pangloss, Candid, and the ungrateful sailor. As they got ashore, a massive earthquake hit and killed numerous people. Pangloss, Candid, and unfortunately, the ungrateful sailor survived. In a shameful sight, the sailor stole money from the pockets of the dead folks for him to be able to buy booze and sleep with prostitutes. On the other hand, Candid was injured. He collapsed in the ground. He believed that he was dying and begged Pangloss to help him. However, Pangloss wanted to philosophize or presume how necessary the earthquake was in this best of all worlds. Candid said, For heaven's sake, man, get me oil and wine, I'm dying. Pangloss continues to philosophize while Candid fainted. Then Pangloss figured out it was time to get some water for his former student. After the water was delivered, it made the trick. Candid became well. The two of them walked and helped people who suffered and preached the necessity of the earthquake. Suddenly, a man questioned Bangalore about his beliefs and view about the original sin and the fall of man. He said that, if everything has always been for the best, there would have been no sin. Pangloss countered that the fall of man fell into the best world ever. The man retorted that if the world is necessarily the best, how can there be a free will? Pangloss said, if it is necessarily the best thing ever for us to have free will, so we do.